Today, we're going to be learning about factors and multiples. To start off with, imagine you're planning the perfect pizza party. You have 24 slices of pizza and need to arrange them on plates. Some plates might get two slices, some three, maybe even four or six. Each way of sharing these slices evenly shows us something special about the number 24. These are its factors. And if you needed to order more pizzas with the same number of slices, those would be multiples. Today, we're going on a mathematical adventure to discover how numbers work together in families through factors and multiples. Get ready. We are about to become number detectives. You might be wondering at this time, what exactly are factors? Well, factors are numbers that divide evenly into another number with no remainder. Let's think of them as pairs of numbers that multiply together perfectly. So let's get into an example. But before we do that, I do want to note that there are always two factors to every number, one and the number itself. The first example I'm gonna share with you is we're going to find the factors of 12. I know that 12 divided by one equals 12. It goes in evenly. I also know that one times 12 equals 12. So therefore one and 12 are factors. Beyond that, don't forget what I just mentioned before we started this example. Every number has at least two factors, one and itself. In this case, 12 has more than two factors. When we already know that one is a factor, one and the number, then we can move on and see if two is a factor. Will two divide evenly into 12? Yes, it does. 12 divided by two equals six. And I also know that two times six equals 12. After finishing one and two, I would then check to see if three divides evenly into 12. And I know it does. 12 divided by three equals four. And I also know that three times four equals 12. So three and four are another pair of factors. So all together, I know there are three pairs of factors, which makes six factors in total for the number 12. When I list them, I want to do so from least to greatest, always starting with the number one. One, two, three, four, six, and 12 are the factors of 12. Once again, don't forget that every number has at least two factors, one and itself. Now let's get into another example. The next one I'm gonna share with you are the factors of 24. Once again, I need to make sure that two numbers can multiply to get that number. Only then are they factors. This also works if you can divide the number evenly into 24. So let's get into it. Once again, we always start with one and the number itself because I know that those two numbers are always factors. In this case, they're one and 24. Then I would move on to two to check to see if it is also a factor of 24. Remember that two is an even number and 24 is an even number. I know that two multiplied by something will get 24. I also know that 24 divided by two will go in evenly. In this case, I know that two times 12 is 24. If I was dividing 24 divided by two, I would get 12. So two and 12 are my next pair of factors. Then you wanna to continue to go up in order 
So I would check number three next. Will three divide evenly into the number 24? And yes, it does. It would go in eight times because three multiplied by eight equals 24. Three and eight are my next pair of factors. Then I would move to the number four. Four also divides evenly into 24 six times because four times six is 24. I know that five will not divide evenly into 24 because 24 does not end in a zero or a five. And then I already multiplied four by six, so I know six is already a factor. And I am done. All I need to do now is list the factors in order from least to greatest. The factors are one, two, three, four, six, eight, twelve, and twenty-four. In the next example, we are going to find the factors of seven. In this case, seven only has two factors, the number one and itself, because seven divided by one equals seven. And remember, it needs to be able to divide evenly without a remainder in order for them to be factors. One times seven is seven, so the two factors for the number seven are one and seven. Now we are going to find the factors of nine. Once again, I always make sure that I start with the number one because I know one and the number will be my first pair of factors. And in this case, it is the number one and the number nine. One times nine equals nine. Nine is an odd number, so I know that I cannot divide two evenly into the number nine. There would be a remainder. So I move on to the number three. Nine divided by three equals three. And I am aware that three times three equals nine. So three is also a factor. When I list my factors, I only need to write the number three once. So when I list them, my three factors are one, three, and nine. Now we're going to find the factors of 20. Once again, make sure to always start with the number one and the number itself. In this case, the first pair of factors is one and 20 because one times 20 equals 20. 20 is an even number, so I know that I can divide two into 20 and not have a remainder. It will go in evenly. In this case, 20 divided by two would equal 10. So my factors are two and 10. Two times 10 equals 20. They're my next pair of factors. Three will not be a factor here because three times seven is 21. So it wouldn't go in evenly if I did 20 divided by three. There would be a remainder. So three, once again, is not a factor of 20. So I move on to the number four. 20 divided by four equals five. And four times five equals 20. So four and five are my next set of factors. I have found all of my factors. The last step is that I need to put them in order from least to greatest. My factors are, one, two, four, five, ten, and twenty. Here's a helpful hint to keep in mind. Factors are less than or equal to the number. Now let's talk about multiples. Multiples are what we get when we multiply a number by a whole number. Think of it as skip counting. 
But when we do multiply one whole number by another whole number, the number created is a multiple of the first. Let's get into an example. If you were to find the multiples of four, you could simply skip count by fours and go four, eight, 12, 16, and 20. Those would be the first five multiples of four. You could also multiply four by other whole numbers, starting at one. Four times one, of course, is four. Then you could multiply four by two, which would equal eight. Eight would be your second multiple of four. Four times three is 12. 12 would be your third multiple, and so on. The next example I'm going to show you is for finding the first five multiples of two. Once again, if skip counting by two is really easy for you, you'll have no problem with multiples. If that doesn't work for you, you could always use a hundreds chart to look at every second number when you're dealing with the number two, or you could also use a multiplication table. Both of those tools would be helpful. Or simply write out two times one equaling two, and then go to two times two equaling four, and then two times three, and so on. Your answers will be the multiples of two. Here's another example. If I was asked to find the first five multiples of five, I would start with the number five, and then I would skip count by fives. That would be the quickest and probably the easiest way for me to do it. And I would have five, 10, 15, 20, and then 25. Now, if you wanted to multiply by one, and then by two, and then by three, and so on, you will have products that are the same answers, and they are the multiples of five. Once again, five, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Don't forget, you can find many more multiples of five. You could just continue skip counting or multiply five by a greater number. The next example is we're going to look at the multiples of three. To find the multiples of three, we could skip count by threes, or we could multiply three by a whole number. In this case, we're looking at starting to find the multiples of three, starting with three. We would have three, six, nine, 12, and 15. Those would be the first five multiples of the number three. If we wanted to continue, skip counting, or multiplying three by another whole number, we can do that. Here's a helpful hint to remember. Multiples are greater or equal to the number itself. That's all for now. Till next time.